Yo, what's up? This is The Edge, and we're here with Create The Life Podcast. And this podcast is based on multiple pillars, and one of the pillars is mindset, also with self-mastery, financial freedom, community networking, and ultimately lifestyle. You know, everybody wants to live a certain lifestyle. But to get to that point, you know, there's a lot of life lessons that you have to learn along the way. And we're blessed to have somebody that's been there, done that, and still living that. So when I think of creating the life you want to live, I think our guest, Miss Stephanie Mills, is a true example of what creating the life is all about. Because you've done it, mm-hmm. you're doing it, you're still doing it, and it don't look like you're slowing down. No, no, I'm not slowing down. Is I mean- there is there an end in mind? I guess when I get 70, I'm 66 now, so I guess maybe when I'm 70, but I can't see myself really stopping because I love what I do and I started so young. You so know, what, I would, started... what, what would stop you? What would stop you? If you love what you're doing, you're going to do it forever. So what what would stop you? 70 is right around the corner. That's four years. Right. 70 is right around the corner. It's right, right. around the corner. So and and being around you and seeing the energy and seeing the passion, I don't see four years being enough to, to stop. get it all <laughs> I know. I don't know. I say that. I am, but I say that. We plan that. But uh, I think I've learned so much with being in in the industry and starting so young. I started when I was like 10 and 11 years old, you know, being on Broadway and, and 11 doing shows. years old? Yep. I, I was at the Apollo. I won six weeks at the Apollo at 11 years old. 11 years old. And then I won a professional booking there with the Isley Brothers. So you was James 11 Bro- years old competing against adults, or this was a 11 amateur? years old competing against adults. Yeah. Where did this voice come from? God. God. So you knew Yeah, you- my, my father used to sing quartet in the South. Um, South as in? North Carolina. In North Carolina. That's, and that's where, where you reside at right that's now. That's where I reside at right now, and that's where I grew up. That's where I spent most of my summers. But I was born and raised in New York. Okay, Brooklyn, so you left, New York. From, you left from the South, went to New York, got your swag, brought it back to the South. Yeah, I like living it. I like, I like Southern living. I like country living. I like that. But I a like, person that comes from New York, they used to noise, they used to action all the time. How can you go from there to... My life was not action. I was always working. And uh, I went to a private school. And so I was always working and going to school and, and, and honing my craft. I didn't really have time to hang out or anything. I never really hung out or any like that. I but was how, always... did, how did you know that this is, like, this is what I want to do? You know, you're so young and there's so many opportunities and so many thing that your peers or everybody actually doing? Well, my family told me that I could actually sing before I could talk. I'm a, I was singing when I was a little baby. So, and I used to sing all the time around the house and my brothers and sisters would always tell me to shut up, you know, shut up, shut up that noise, shut up, shut up. So they read about an ad in the paper about them needing nine black orphanage kids to do a, sh- a show called Maggie Flynn, which ran on Broadway about nine months. It starred Shirley Jones and the late Jack Cassidy. And I was pansy. Irene Cara was in that uh, play. Giancarlo Esposito, who's a famous actor now. There was a lot of kids that came out of that show. And I did The Electric Company. I did uh, Captain Kangaroo. I mean, you probably don't know those shows now, but those right. were those were really popular shows back then. And that's where it all started from? And that's where it all started from. Well, how, did, how do you go from acting to the singing part? Like right now, I know you just easy. filmed a movie. But uh, you know you don't have too many actors. There's a few actors that are good or blessed to be able to sing. But like you're like a great singer, and you know. But you started out acting. Sounds like no, I started off singing actually. But and I thought you said they just, brought you to the play. Well, and that's where I started. started singing. Remember, remember, I I uh, won the amateur hour at. Oh, so you Power. did that before then. So you yes. started with that, and I that started right with that, and that. then that they uh, I went to an audition for. Uh, Maggie Flynn, and then I got that role. All and right. then I had a record out called I Knew It Was Love. I was signed to Paramount Records like when I was 15. Oh, so and do you, do you think they chose you because you already was somewhat popular or because you just naturally act? I think Ken Harper, who was a DJ on AM radio, played my record. 
And that's how he heard about me, and, and, and they wanted me to come down and audition for The Wiz. I actually did not want to audition for The Wiz because I had gone up for so, so many different Maggie things. Flynn I went from Maggie Flynn. I went from Maggie Flynn. To The Wiz. Did that, that's what No, prompt. I went from Maggie Flynn. Then I had a record out called I Knew It Was Love on Paramount Records. Ken Harper, who was the producer of The Wiz, heard my record, actually played my record on his station heard my record and asked me to come down to audition. I did not want to go. So and you had my no mother, interest in becoming well, the Well, because I had gone up for so many things and didn't get it. So okay. I had, a, there's a lot of rejection in our business, especially. So how, do, how do a person that's already, I, I, would, I would consider yourself successful at a young age, you know, we say I have a record because so many people aspire to have a record and you actually have a record. So you, you're in front of everybody else. And then you're going out to audition. Like, how do you deal with rejection? And if singing is your passion, and this right here is acting, like, how did you, like, find, I would say, mindset or find the drive to say, I'm going to I'm gonna get this deal. I'm going to continue to see this thing through? Well, because, I had a strong mother. And my okay. mother traveled with me up until I was, like, 24 years old. So my mother was always backstage, always wherever I went. And my mother was very, very, a very strong Southern woman and didn't take a lot of mess from anybody. So she was always with me and always told me to be the best that I could be. Don't worry about what people tell you. And she, the one thing I remember that she always says is not how well you live, it's how long you live well. Because a lot of people live well for a short period of time and then they lose it all. So she taught me. It's how well you live long. That's and you're the living most li and you're living well long. You're still out here. And like the fact that you have some of the current artists sampling some of your music, mm -hmm. like what does that do? Does, does that give you like an extra spark or does it give you like motivation to keep going? Like how do you how do you deal with something like that? To sit back and say, I've been in this game for so many decades and I have this young kid, so to speak. And he wants to use my music. What does, what does that do for you? It's wonderful because it's wonderful mailbox money, you know. <laughs> so I love when they sample my music or sample mm -hmm. something from me because I, I, I love it. But it's, it's flattering. It's in, and, and next year will be the 50th. 50, anniversary. I'm 45. <laughs> yes, before 50 you. 50 years. 50 year, the 50th anniversary of The Wiz. I was 17 years old when I did The Wiz on Broadway. I did it for 17. five years. And you did it with Michael Jackson? No, Michael Jackson did the movie. Oh, he did the movie? I did the Broadway show. Oh, okay. There was I was a before them. Oh, okay. But, you know. I dated Michael Jackson. That's what I was getting at. Yeah. I was like, okay. So. Did you which which Michael Jackson did you date? The when he was black. <laughs> <laughs> I, I he's dated, always he's always he's been always black. been black. He's but always I mean, been. he's always been black. But I dated him when he had the afro and he okay, was you had, okay when he was the shaft the old school cool yeah, the afro yeah. inspired Michael yeah, Jackson. Yeah, we were so young. But, we were very young. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's. That's actually like for us, you know, that's one of the people I wish I would have got a chance to oh, meet. Oh, you would have loved him. He was, and he was so... from Indiana. He was from Indiana, and I remember one time. He was, I was from Gary, Gary, Indiana. Yeah, he was from somewhere in Indiana, but yeah. he came to Indianapolis one time and they shut the whole mall down, you know, for him to, you know, he caused a big chaos. And it's like, man, that's, that's, that's major. And yes. With somebody like Michael, did you see that in him at a young age? If you're, like, you're dating Michael Jackson, like, how could you let that go? I think he, he let me go. I didn't let him go. He let me go. And he, 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 Michael always wanted to be the, the, the king of pop. He always had that vision. He always had that drive. And he thought by doing certain things that would make him who he was. But he was very gentle, very loving, and extremely smart. So do you think when somebody like, Oh, Michael Jackson is so great. You know, I know to be great, you have to sacrifice so many things. You have to sacrifice your personal life. You have to sacrifice things that you probably want to do. You know, I think that's part of what made him so great that he's able to just lock in, or even with yourself, you know, because I talk about creating the life. There are certain things you have to give up, and a lot of people that that's aspiring to be something, 
they still try to hold on to those certain things. So can you speak on the fact that, okay, for me to go and me being around these successful people, like what are some of the sacrifices? The sacrifice, well, see, we saw a lot. I mean, Michael and I used to go to Studio 54 and, and, and hang out. But Studio we never 54, I heard was about a, that. was a big uh, uh, club in New York where everybody would go and hang out. Liza but I Minnelli thought Michael and, didn't get a chance to hang out. Well, I'm telling you, he did. <laughs> so who you go believe? I'm going to believe you because you're here. Like, and everything no, he you did, said he did. Been... He did hang out. I mean, he, he hung out in California. He'd drive his car on Ventura Boulevard. He didn't like to go on the freeway, but he would drive his car. We'd go up and down the freeway. You know, he loved chocolate chip cookies. and he And he liked me because I was... I never took no for an answer, so I would have to go in the movie theater and get popcorn, even though we weren't going into the movie house. I would not let them tell me, no, you can't get popcorn. Up. You said movie house. That's what you tell somebody who, that my grandma used to say, my grandma used to say movie house. <laughs> <laughs> movie house. <laughs> movie house. You know, like when I'm talking to my kids and I say schoolhouse, they laugh at me, but it's like, that's where they used to say you that. You tell when, your age. Yeah, you yeah. tell your age. Yeah. But that's pretty cool, the fact that, you know, you was able to. Be around somebody like I was. I was around a lot. I mean, I've got a chance to be with Lena Horne and Ella Fitzgerald. You might not know these people in Pearl Bailey, and and I met you know Jacqueline Onassis and uh, Caroline Kinney. People that came to see the show, Stevie and and Luther. Luther Vandross wrote one of the songs in the in the Wiz, and I knew Luther before he became Luther Vandross. So I got a chance to be around. You know, Liza Minnelli and Ben Vereen. So and you, you learn you... a lot from those people. I learned a lot from the people that I was around because I was the kind of person who sat and listened and watched. I never, I was, I was always listening and watching. I was like a sponge. So when you, see younger, when you see the younger people, when you see the younger people that's aspiring to become, like I have a daughter that's aspiring to become, and then you go back and you see all those names that you named, they became what everybody wants to become. What is some advice that you would give somebody younger to say, look, these are the things that I know for a fact. These are the things that the greatest of the greats have done. You have to put in the work. You know, I still like work out six, six times a week. You know, I run on the treadmill. I walk on the treadmill for my lungs for me to be able to sing. I sing to my original recordings so that I sound somewhat like I sound back in the day. Do you see a difference? Like oh, absolutely. If I didn't sing every day, I wouldn't be able to sing home or I feel good all over. Those songs are hard to sing. So I would not be able to do that. You have to put in the work. There's no such thing as I'm going to lay in bed all day and get up and go do a a concert and be able to sing your song. There's no way. And but today people don't even sing. Everything is taped and stems. I I use no stems. I use no recordings in my show. Everything is live. My singers are live. My band is live. I do not cheat. But everybody's not blessed. No, they could be if they put in the work. They so could be. So to get that voice, you have to put in. You have to. But put some in people the work. are God gifted and they're they're talented too another measure that somebody else tried to compare to is you can't compare because I don't I don't think somebody can just put in that work. I mean that's just me to get the voice you have. But it's just natural. Like when I came out to see you to see you perform, it goes to another level that's like it's one of those things was like, you know, certain people have certain things. You don't look at it like that because I don't care how hard you work at certain things, you're only going to get to certain levels. That's true. That's true. But still, even with that, even I still have to put in the work. Right. That's all I've ever known is is being disciplined, being on time, and putting in the work. Right. And I see, I see that. And it's like, I remember when I came to your show and you were singing to that guy. You remember that one? Yeah, singing? you keep saying that. Singing, singing to, to that, that guy. guy. <laughs> hey, that guy was mesmerized. I don't know what it is about this voice, but... <laughs> This voice did something to this guy. I wish we can have the But footage. it's all a fantasy. On but stage it's a in, fantasy. In that moment, it like it, it like it's like you touch his soul. I, do you I, look at yourself as somebody do you go out there and when you perform and you're saying, Hey, I'm gonna dig so deep into this person, they're gonna engulf in me. No, I don't. So you just go out and just do I go what out you and do. I say I'm gonna do the very best I can and I hope that everybody enjoys it. I never say I'm gonna 
oh, I'm going to go out there and do this. I just say, I want to do the very best I can. But when you're doing it, you're doing it so effortless. And like when you look at the response and to think you've been doing this so long and at a high level. Yes. You know, it's, that's not easy to do. Like what, what is it about you or what do you think has helped you to like to sustain like that's a long time like we look in the music industry there's only a few people that can go decade after decade after decade after decade and you know when I look at somebody like yourself and I look at like a Frankie Beverly with Maze like he always has a sold out show and it's like like what is it about you or in those type of people that's able to just continue forever well, sleep is my best friend. <laughs> really, honestly, it's very simple. Sleep is my best friend. I don't really drink. I mean, as I got older, I, I, I uh, drink a little bit now, but um, I never smoked. And uh, I wasn't a party girl. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't a, a party girl. I always it's a different took... era now. Like, people want to be visible. They want to be seen. I don't want to be seen. I don't want to be. I mean, I don't. I'm. I've never been that. I've never been one that. Oh, I got to be seen. I. I like to just do the work, and I felt like if I did the work, I would reap the reward. And that's like, but before you got to this part right here, when you started looking at, okay, how did this person? Like, I'm. I'm just curious because I'm like, I try to be a sponge. Anytime I get around people that's successful, I'm always curious as to why they were successful and. For me, I would like to look a little bit deep and I always try to say, okay, like who were some of the people that influenced you to make you say, I'm going to be this person or I'm going to go to the next level? And was it somebody that say, or somebody that was doing it for a long period of time? Diane Ross, the Diana Motown, Ross. Jackson 5. And when I, you know, I was a young girl loving the Jackson 5 and no one could have told me that I wasn't going to marry Michael Jackson. So, you know, Why and didn't you every marry Michael? Because he didn't want to marry me. <laughs> you keep asking me that. Why I told you, you just, one why, why didn't you just say, I'm going to put my pride aside and I'm going to get on one knee and ask Michael? Oh, no. No, honey. <laughs> I am the prize. Uh, no, please. Like, why women want to just sit up and say, look, if this is what you want. No, because thought, that's not our role. It's your I role thought, to I, ask us. To, I thought that if, if it's something you want, you'd be a little proactive. Maybe you was more mature. And you're supposed to say, look, hey, this is how it's supposed well, to Michael be. Michael was scared. Of, well, you know, when he was doing the Wiz uh, in New York, we lived on um, Sutton Place. And I used to do his laundry. And I would, we would go down in the basement, and it was dark. Michael was scared of everything. So we would go down in the basement, and I'd wash his clothes, and he'd sit on, like, the dryer or whatever. And he was just so scary. But he, we were too young. We were, like, 19, 20. You know, that was very, very early in his career. But if you said <coughs> these are the things that I envisioned, these are the things that I saw. But why I didn't you, why know. Didn't you take I didn't the, know. Why did you make the move? Because I don't I wasn't in love with him. I loved him. He was Michael Jackson and he was cute and had all his hair and I'd braid his hair and all that. But I, you know, I wasn't ready to get married. And oh. he wasn't either. So it was too young. I was the timing, too, the, timing <clears throat> the timing was, was the timing was off. I wasn't ready. I would have been a terrible wife, a terrible mate. What makes a terrible wife? What would you have done? You don't go uh, out, <laughs> you wash clothes. What makes a terrible wife? I I was probably spoiled, you know. I've worked, but made my own clothes. money. A spoiled person don't wash clothes. Oh yes, they do. But oh, if you like somebody, you, era. it's a different era. You know, you yeah. wash clothes. You you what? You know, we were friends. I would cook. I couldn't cook. I made some bad rice one time. Did he ever tell you the and food he ate was it. bad? No, he never. He ate. He would eat it. <laughs> he would eat it. So you mean to tell me, you made some rice for the greatest? I mean, the greatest of all time. He is and truly. It wasn't, he was truly the greatest of. He still and is. And you gave him some bad rice. <laughs> well, I couldn't cook. <laughs> I mean, but, but I was you, trying. Like, but you, you didn't gotta have give a me friend. You didn't have trying. a friend. Like a well, lot of like, times, well, women they go, they say, they go to they, like when it when means something to them, they go to their best friend or they go to somebody and say, "I gotta get this." Well, right. it was me, Latoya, and Michael staying in the apartment, and I tried to cook, and she was trying to help me. I guess. Were you but, nervous while you were cooking, or you just got up there with that confidence? 
I thought I was doing okay until he said, what's wrong with this? <laughs> <laughs> Did you eat it? <laughs> Did you eat the rice? No. Oh, she was trying to set Michael Jackson up. No, she no, was trying I wasn't to, trying to set him up. She was trying to set the king of pop up, give him some rice that she never eat. Hey, never eat something that somebody fixes. He's the greatest. That they he, won't eat. He truly is the greatest. He and Prince. Him and the Prince. greatest. Michael or Prince? Michael, of course. Oh, okay, now we always get that. You know, a lot of people try to put Well, see, I, 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 I'm prejudiced, I guess. I, I yeah. you know. Uh, Both of them have strong catalogs. Oh yes, I yeah. love Prince. You can't go wrong with either, either one. Either one, of them. no, yeah. you can't. So, you fix Michael some bad rice. Mhm. Mm but you was blessed to be in the presence of somebody like Michael. Yeah, someone of greatness. Did you learn something from being around? Like, if you say, okay, the things I took from being around Michael or People of Michael Cal it's, bar it's rarely somebody meet people of Michael Cal He really knew how to connect with his fans. You know, at Havenhurst, when the girls would be outside the gate and trying to, you know, talk to him. It's, Michael really knew how to connect with his fans. That I learned that from him and how just easy go. I never heard him say anything bad about anyone. You know, he was very easy was going. Taught, or was it taught, or was it come, did it come from his upbringing, or was it just Well, you got to remember, natural? he was, what, six or five when they started, and, you know, Motown teaches you how to do interviews, how to talk, oh, how so to Oh, so y'all have a true class at Motown. Oh, yeah, they had, and I was signed to Motown for a little while. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's where the connection started, or did no, it start No, the connection the started at the Wiz. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's pretty cool. I see the business, they're taking on their clients or whatever and trying to prep them for things that they're going to actually experience. And then mm. I would go to Vegas to see Diana's shows because I was signed to, to uh, Motown and Suzanne DePaz would take me to Vegas and we and I'd go spend the weekend at Vegas and, and see, you know, Diana's show. Like, so how, how, did, how did a superstar or somebody that's established receive you. You know, oh, they see a wonderful. young it's wonderful. because like a lot of time I hear in this industry you have a lot of people that they kinda they're in their own situation or they don't really like reach back unless they really like you. And I think that kinda discourages a lot of our up and coming aspiring um singers. You know, so sometimes you hear those things and then you know for you to be around somebody like Diana Ross, and for her to just, did she just welcome you in? She welcomed me in, but I was around Diana, and I was around Aretha. I was around Roberta Flack. I was around Nick and Val, Ashford and Simpson. I, I was blessed to be around all these people. So you got all this experience. Why, why don't you start a company? I don't want no company. But you have so much knowledge. I, but today's people would not listen. They don't, they don't ask for advice. They, don't, they wouldn't listen but, to me. But if you have this... You have this foundation. It's like, for me listening to you, I think that if you had a company or you had something, I think you could take somebody to the top. Oh, absolutely. I'd know exactly what to do. I would know, I would know exactly what to do. I really would. So why, like, why wouldn't you put forth that effort? It doesn't, it doesn't mean that much to you, or like, if I, if I see a layup and I know I can do something, why not? Cause most, cause probably the artists won't listen. They'll be hard headed, and I'll and I'll get frustrated, and I'll be like, okay, go ahead and do what you want to do. But it's a chance to go to the next level, you know. Like, and I then know I don't like dealing with the people in the industry. I I I'm not one. I'm not. I've never been good at smoothing and and you know having to do something to get somewhere. I've I've never been doing that. I've always relied on my talent. But that's very rare because in this day and age, I think that's the way a lot of people get ahead, right? Yeah, well, I wouldn't get ahead. <laughs> but <laughs> now, but, but if you sit up and say, I'm going into a business, I understand the things that it takes, so you'd rather sacrifice all that. I'd you, rather hire somebody to do all of that for me and let me just do what I do. That's why I have, core. I have Amp. So he does all the stuff that, and just let me walk the into the show. Yeah. The smoother. Yeah, he's the smoozer. 
He gets the toll. I call, hey, hey, amp, stop smoothing, amp. <laughs> you know? But, but now you know, it. like amp we like to it. talk about, like um, you know, ultimately, you know, I think when a lot of these, the the new generation, they look at the end goal, and on this, we always talk about lifestyle leisure. We always talk right. about the end goal, and. I see somebody like yourself that you know exactly what it takes to get to the top. And you have a chance to advance yourself. But because of the core of who you are, you say, I'm not going to deal with that. That says a lot about you in a positive way. But you have so many people that will take that situation and say, I'm just going to do it because I know I put in the work and I know that's going to take me to another level. And we talk about lifestyle leisure you know, it's like, or it's like when you sit back and say, "I'm going to sacrifice what I could potentially have because I put in all that work, and now I can reap the benefits of it." And you choose to turn it down. Why? Because I've already reaped the benefits of it. I have every. But there's more. Uh, well, it depends on. <clears throat> it depends on what you consider more. I'm living. I'm living my best life. So you're living the dream. I'm I'm living the dream. I have for a very long time. So How many I, years? Oh. Of living I, this lifestyle or this business? Oh well, I'm 66. I I would say 40 years of it. I've been living 45, 40 years. 40 of it. years. I've so life owes it. you nothing. Life owes me nothing. This business owes me nothing. So it owes me nothing. I would, I, me personally, I would take it to another level. I would be like, okay, let me. Get well, these people well, well, me. sir, sir. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Where do you think I should take it? I just think that you have so much information. You have so much that you can give. So well, many. I give people. it freely. I'm going to give it to your daughter. But I'm, I'm going to give like, her advice and tell her the best that I but know. But there's more people than my daughter. There's more people out there that says, like, wow. look. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm like, look, you got the blueprint. Like, I look at myself But everybody like, don't think I have the blueprint. But the people that know, know. If you've been there, done that, you're talking about the amount of years in this industry, because this industry is, it's you know, brutal. it's evolved. It's brutal. It's uh, a lot of rejection. But you've uh, been a through lot that. Of, a lot of, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, sacrifices, a lot of distractions. And if you're not focused, the one thing you have to be is focused you have on to what be you want to do. I yeah. agree. And not listening to the noise. There's a lot of noise out there. Everybody has an opinion, but you have to follow your opinion. And that's what I told your daughter. Don't listen to the noise. But you, that's, and that's what I'm saying. I think you have so much information to give. We're not gonna put everybody in a box, so I'm not gonna put everybody in the same category. There's certain people that need a Stephanie Mills to say, "Look, these are the things that you can do. You should put together some type of man." I'm gonna suggestion. do a book. I'm okay, in the process of writing a book. That'd be so, great. and I haven't wanted to do a book up until now. And it's going to be primarily about the business, about managers, about people that ask for tickets all the time, about uh, just the business of, of this business, of how, you know, because there's a lot of slimy people in this business. Right. And everybody has an agenda. And exactly. you have to know that, you know, and, and you and can't that's trust. What, and, that's, and, that's why, and, and that's why I say it's so much that you could do to help because you're like, Myself coming from a situation, or we, we usually come from situations that's parallel where you don't have, and every bit of information that can advance you, it counts and it matters. And I think like somebody like yourself, you have that. I think if an artist really don't know in this business right now, they're totally being ripped off financially. When you say don't business. know, don't well, know. Well, they don't know that a business manager shouldn't get 5%. Of anything. Why should he? He should get a salary and it should be capped. If he maybe give him 2% and just let it go to $100,000 and then that's what he gets. But no manager, no business manager should get 5% of your money, especially if he's not but making how do investment. You, how do you come up with that number? Because I've learned and I've watched and I've watched people that did that, like Madonna, 
a, a, a business manager never got 5% of her money. So they take, advantage of, they take advantage of they certain people. They take advantage people. of certain people, you know, and everybody, and then like in this business, they're like, okay, if I introduce you, if you introduce me to somebody, then I got to get a piece of your piece of your business. Huh? Where do they do that at? What kind of business is that? Yeah. But if it's, a, if it's the going rate and you're desperate, like I think a lot of these artists. But there artists, is no going rate. You make your own rules. I made my own rules. But I want, but if I'm an artist, but if I'm an artist and I want to get put on, and but these you can't. Are... You never make a decision out of desperation. But that's I don't care. I don't care how broke you are. What you never make a decision out of desperation. And you're seeing that happening right now. I think that um, a lot of people are being taken advantage of because they're like, "Oh, this is what's happening, and this is what you have to do." And when people came to me like that, I was like, "Well, I don't do business like that." And did they shy away from you? Or? Yeah, they shied away from me. And did I care? No. But everybody's not built like you. You're a Brooklyn-born girl. You've been in this thing. You're confident. You know, you have a different type of mindset. So what about the person that don't have that mental capacity? To they have to get it. They can't be weak in this business. It eats you up and spit you out, and you'll crash and burn. And we've all seen people that have crashed and burned the best have so crashed you, and burned, so and they're not, this, they're not here anymore. I, yeah, absolutely. So when, you, so when you're looking back, you're like, um, like an OG to the whole thing. You're sitting back, and you're looking at some of these young artists. You know, like, is there somebody that you say, man, I wish I could talk to this person? Oh, or, there's a lot of them I, I sit back and I see, and I wish. And I have reached out to some of them, but they don't reach back. I have like why do you think up. people don't why, like? Why is it? And, and I'll and tell you why. I deal with the same thing. So I'll tell you why. I want to hear your read. If you have people around you that have an agenda and don't wish you well, they wouldn't want someone like me to come around and tell them anything. Because I'm going to tell them the truth. I've already lived it, so I'm going to tell them the truth of how they. I would help them not go through the same things I did. I'd make it easier for them. So what, like, and that's that's the thing that I kind of struggle with because I'm um, in my field. I kind of know what I'm talking about. You do. But these kids won't listen. Do you think it's a generational thing? What is it that that's driving these kids or putting people in the mindset where you sit up and see somebody that's been there, done that, living it, but you still go over here and choose to decide, or you choose to side with somebody that has never did anything. Where is the disconnect? I think, I would tell you a story, but I don't want to tell you this story. But what I'll say is, I was in a situation where I was doing a role, and another person was doing the role that I created. They gave that person so much attention. She was doing this and doing that, and you know, but she would, she would never even come next to me. And then the producers would come to me and say, can you help her sing this song or help her do this? And I'd say, well, she has to develop that character the way she sees it. Um, I just think that they think they know it all, you know, and that we're old school. We don't know. How, how are we going to know? Like they think I'm old school. They don't, they don't believe I have anything to give to them or tell them. And that's just what it is. And then people are throwing all this money at them. They got all their homies or their croonies around them giving them bad advice. I'll tell you this story. You know Young Dolph? Young Dolph, yeah, from Memphis. He got shot in Los Angeles. Oh. And I reached out to him. I wanted to protect him and tell him something. but That's two different... You're in rap. You're two different. But where's the connection? But first of all, it's entertainment. Okay. It's entertainment, and I wanted to help him. I wanted to just talk to him as somebody from Brooklyn and been in this business, and I've been around all types of situations. I wanted to talk to him and just kind of school him, and he wouldn't talk to me. And later on, he was murdered. But you know, I have reached out to certain people. To, to kind of just tell them or try to 
help them. And I've never told that story. So do you but, think, um, do you think as a, like, we're in a situation where, you know, for us to be proactive and reach out and do all those things, it takes a lot. Do you think that kind of discourages you from reaching out in the future? Or does it like, these kids are not going to listen. It's a waste of time. Does it put you in that mindset? Or is it just something that come across where you're like, you're just feeling it? And you say, you know what? I want to do it anyway. Because me personally. I do it anyway. Like, yeah. like, like uh, um, I reached out to somebody that got shot. A girl that got shot. I reached out because I wanted to tell her, you don't have to take this. You don't have to. But they don't reach back. I'll right. DM them or I'll reach out to, or I'll ask Amp, I want to talk to so-and-so or whatever. But they don't, they don't, you yeah, know. Yeah, and, and that's what I was. And so, and so what do you do? I'm not going to. Exactly. You know, it's like I'm reaching out to you to kind of give you my wisdom as an older woman. But if you don't want it, uh, you know. Yeah, that's, the, those are my thoughts. Exactly, because. You what know, can I, you do? Yeah, like if you continue to reach out, you're talking about somebody that's established that's extending this olive branch to say, olive hey, branch to these say, hey, things that can help you. Maybe if you do this, that might help you better. But like why? Like why Why won't they listen to history? Because it doesn't mean anything to them. And most of them don't even remember me or know, or know my history. So they don't, they, you know, it's like nothing. It's, they don't care. They're yeah, doing it now. Yeah. But and the and the thing about it is now with this social media and, and <clears throat> Instagram and everything, some of those people are not even living like what they're portraying. That's not even true. And then you got all these young people trying to do that and trying to live like that. Well no, that's not even true. And half the people that are millionaires now won't be millionaires next year. Yeah, you have to keep that's one that's an ongoing thing. So as far as what you have right now and tomorrow it's a whole new ball game. It is. You know? So I look at like when I look at all this stuff, I sit back and that's why like for me it's important. Like I get more out of conversations like this because you've been there, done that, and it's like iron sharpens iron. Right. And it's like a some get some little get a little clarity because I'm like, I reach out to people or I let them know that hey, I'm here, but they kind of brush those things off. Right. Right. And, and for someone like you, who's a Hall of Famer, why wouldn't they listen to you? That's, and that's why I'm asking you, why wouldn't they listen? Well, you know, like, <laughs> I used to, I used to, um, I, I love basketball and I, and I love football. I'm a Cowboys fan. You know? That's okay. You know, but, and. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of Cowboys fans that's disappointed. <laughs> so you have, you have a big herd that you can actually lean your shoulder on. So. But, you know, it's like. I grew up with Magic and Earl the Pearl Monroe and, and Clyde Drexler and okay. Larry Bird and the Celtics and bad boys. But then I see these basketball players now, if they hurt their little pinky, they can't play. Yeah, if they hurt their little toe, they can't play. It's a different era. But it's a different era. I, try, I, I don't understand it because I, like, I was somewhat like a tweener. I was coming from the old school era that's going into this new wave of doing things but when you start looking at from a financial aspect they're still getting compensated off of their name image likeness and they're still able to achieve everything that you've achieved like with us we had to go out and play you got to go out and play you got to go out and perform you got to show who you are day in day out that's what we had to do we had to perform but, we didn't like there were shows like back in the day it would be myself, Stevie Wonder, Ashford and Simpson, Luther Vandross, on one Patty show? LaBelle, all on one show. It used to be called the Super. So Fest. when you when you go out when you go out, you that that's a strong lineup you just named. Oh, just absolutely. Named. So when you go out there as a performer, you go out there. Are you like, hey, I'm going in sports. I know I want to one up the next person, or I want to sit out there and do my thing, like. What's the mindset of people that respect each other in this crap, in this business? What's the mindset of when you're in, like, you're going into the arena, you say, hey, I don't know, 
your lineup? Do you look at the lineup and say, hey, make sure I'm second. Make sure I'm fourth. Oh, absolutely. Sure. It's, so, it's, it's healthy, but it's healthy competition. Not vicious or, or violent like it is sometimes today competition. Right. That was healthy. Of course, we want to be better. Of course, we want to go second. Of course, we want the, the prime spot, the sweet five spot. Five people. Five people. Where sweet do spot. you want to be? I, five people, I want to be third. Third. Second or third, yes. Why? Because Second, the everybody might not be at the show. Well, se- well, the first person, people are coming in. The second, By the second act, most people are in the show. By the third act, everybody should be there. And that's the sweet spot because you're not getting people. They're not too tired yet. But the headliners are usually last. I know, but some people are tired after that. That's why tomorrow, I got to perform last tomorrow. And I be telling them. <laughs> And Paris, who's my manager, why can't I go third or, or second? But you're the headliner. You like no, the... I'm not a headliner. I'm oh. a closer. There's a difference. Oh, it's... A headliner is is Beyonce. A headliner is Taylor Swift. A headliner is people that don't need other people on their show. That's a headliner. A headliner is Michael Jackson, Prince, Lionel Richie, Earth, so Wind, and Fire. I'm a closer. I just learned something. I thought, okay, whenever there's a show, the person that goes last. No, I'm a closer. A headliner don't need anybody else. Okay. So the closer, we got Stephanie Mills, the closer in the building, and we're yes. going to watch her closer. And I watch you close when you sung. I always bring that up. <laughs> just singing to this guy. Hey, guys, y'all gotta, I got to find this. I got to find this footage. When she sung to this guy, I don't know what I don't know why his you relationship keep talking about status that. But I think he lost his wife. He lost his whole family that night. I'm Herbert. telling you. And when she put his name, the guy's name was Herbert. You like, remember his name? I remember name. all that. I'm like, when she said Herbert and she brought that voice. That w- I was singing Feel the Fire. You was singing to Herbert. No, I it. sure I so was. I was singing Feel the Fire to Herbert. Because got men like that. They no, like- Herbert, I'm t- I don't know who this guy is, but. This guy right here, Herbert, he lost everything. I know he lost everything. No, he didn't. He lost every. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's no way. Okay, you, okay, let's take yourself out of Stephanie Mills. Okay. I'm just a girl. What we're going to name you? What was your, what's your, what's your alias? Lame, name, Candy. Candy. Candy and Herbert goes to see Stephanie Mills sing. Stephanie Mills come to the stage, and she sits there, and she sings. Feel the fire. Feel the fire. And then she incorporates Herbert. your Herbert. Yes, my in Herbert. In the song. Right. And you see your Herbert sitting right there, and he look at this lady like he never looked at Candy. <laughs> Do Candy go see, home with Herbert? Yes. Because that's a fantasy. <laughs> that's a fantasy. For the rest of your life, you whenever you are, you say, you, you ain't look at me like the way you look at Stephanie. You know, y'all, women hold on to everything. They do. They memory do. of an elephant. Yes. Women. We have a memory of the elephant. And yes. they only bring it out when? They're mad. Or okay. you do something that's disrespectful. So, you think Herbert not going to do something that's disrespectful throughout his Wait, tenure. let me ask you this. Did you think it was disrespectful for him to stand there and let me sing to him? I think Herbert had to be a single man or a man that's out of his mind to have somebody and be standing there. I would have just, I would have told somebody else to get up there. You wouldn't have let me sing to you? Nah. <laughs> I don't know. If, hey, do we have that footage? <laughs> If we have that footage, that right there would be, then you, then everybody understand what I'm talking about, you know. But you know, in creative life, we like to talk about everything, everything life, and you know, as a person that plays sports, you know, throughout I wish my, I, I wish that I have seen you play. Don't worry, it's around. It's here. It's, it's there. It's there. <laughs> it's documented. It's stamped. It's in the archive. You know. But, you know, like, so I played for an extended period of time. But throughout the time that you're playing, you know, you have your priorities. Right. And when you have these different priorities, you know, everybody look at you as sports. They look at you as, hey, this is what he do. This is what you do. And they think those are the things that actually kind of move you. Right. But for myself, you know, 
I'm playing, I'm at the tail end of my career, I'm looking at these charts, I'm looking at these numbers, and I'm like, I can keep, continue to go up. And as I go up, there's a, my, there better my chances of making it to the Hall of Fame, because you never know if you're gonna make it to the Hall of Fame. Right. And then on my 11th year, no, my 10th year, you know, the mother of my children, you know, she gets diagnosed with leukemia. Wow. And so with that, you have a decision to make. And with those decisions, it comes, do I chase my personal and continue to chase these goals and disregard? Or I think about my children, and I have four children, and you have to make a decision. So it was like crossroads. and like, damn, am I ever going to make it to the Hall of Fame? Am I ever going to be able to do this when I'm right there? You know? Right, right. And so you have to make those tough decisions. And the reason I'm saying that I know throughout your career, you had to make a tough decision. Yes. As far as you know, your son. Yes, yes. He says, that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> That's his slogan, so you're going to see that yes. out. So because your son, you had to shut down. You say, I'm going to step back from I surely did. business. You know, and those things, I don't think a lot of people really understand the sacrifices you make because... You're talking about starting out at what age? 10, 11. 10, year, 10, 11 years old. And you're at the height of your career. And you got to say, hey, I got to walk away. And that's why I say a lot of things become, or a lot of things run parallel in everybody's situation. That's what I like about this podcast because it talks about everything. Um, I was 45 years old when I was pregnant with my son. And in at three months, they told me he was going to be special needs. And I didn't care. I didn't care if he had one eye. I was going to have this baby and we were going to rock so this world together. But they told you ahead of time. They told me ahead of time. And you had a chance to say, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. Oh, absolutely. But I, w I would never do that. I, would, I, I felt like God gave me this child. I wanted a child. And I went on and I, and I had him and I hit the ground running with him. I, I gave him every... I stopped singing. I was home every day that he... Uh, came home from school, everything. I wanted to be home every day when he came to school. And I had a teacher go to school with him every day so that he would keep up with the kids and he wouldn't fall back. And he only took two special classes. I wouldn't let him, I wouldn't let him just go in a class and just sit. I wanted him to learn. And he was, he's, he's an A student. He's an author. He had, he's written a book and he's working on his second book. We're going to name your book. That a word? Yep, that, that a word. <laughs> his name is. His book is. Say his name for Farad. 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 Farad J. Mills. Farad J. Mills. So, hey, when y'all see that, Farad J. Mills, know it's coming from a special place, oh, a special yeah. person. I mean, and, I, I just, I didn't believe anything the doctors told me. I, I just did what you know. They so don't just, give you a playbook. That's when you like have a, a baby. That's that's what I consider a selfless moment. Like you don't get credit for it. And people don't really recognize it because a lot of people, a lot of times, people don't know your story, or they, you know, this is a world. They full think it's of, all easy. And everybody no. think it, they're looking at the superstar. We have a superstar. That I don't, is, I don't be, consider that, myself a superstar. What is a superstar? I don't. Somebody at five star bringing up a song, or I bring up some a moment, or I say that name. It, it embarrasses me when you say that. It embarrasses you, but it brings joy. I think. As you can see, everybody that I know personally are happy to have you around or even the fact that, you know, when my mom got a chance to say, hey, I get a chance to take a picture with Stephanie Mills. So you have to, sometimes we get put in these positions that, like, we don't ask for I didn't ask to be the head of the family, but you're giving those. You're because, giving it, yeah. Because you and, are cause capable. Because God knows you can handle yeah, it. Yeah, he knows you're he capable of it. He doesn't put anything so, on you that so you, you can't bear. So you are a superstar. Okay. If you wasn't a superstar, you wouldn't have a hat. See what it says. My hat. Stephanie. My hat? Stephanie, yes. My mother named me after Humphrey Bogart's daughter. Mm. Stephanie. Yeah. Like... My sisters wanted me to be named Annette because they watched um, the Mickey Mouse Club. But my mother was like, no, she's going to be named She knew Stephanie. she was going to have something special. <laughs> But that, that says a lot about you as a person because, you know, those are the selfless moments that we don't get credit for or people really don't know unless you know the person. Right. But when you start digging deeper into the person, you say, okay, you did what to do what? Because you could have easily said, nah, I'm not going to follow through with this. But you took on the challenge and that's what winners do. And that's what we like to talk about here. And we it, like 
winners. Like. And it was it was a challenge because everybody was like, well, I first of all, I didn't tell anybody I was pregnant. I waited until a long, long time till I almost was ready to have the baby. So you weren't performing? I wasn't performing. I, w- I was. I performed up until my seventh month. I was in a play. Do you have some show? Do you have some pictures like where you say... I- you can say, hey, now I'm starting to show. Do you, you can recognize I know yeah, I'm quite yeah. sure. Yeah, but I was so excited to be pregnant that the minute I got pregnant, I started wearing big clothes. So, but you're so excited and nobody knows. There's like a contradiction there because it's like... Well, I'm not... When I'm, I'm, not, contra- when I, when I want, when I'm excited, I want people to know. Uh, but the people that I wanted to know knew. Oh, did they hold it down for you? Oh, absolutely. You didn't hear about it, did you? <laughs> wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you wasn't here. Oh my God, uh, you was not here, but little baby. I'm here right now, though. <laughs> a lot of people that was there aren't here, and That's I'm true. here, and, and I wasn't here. there. Right. So That's true. I'll take this position right now. So we had the great Stephanie Mills here, and you know, with a career, there's so many things that comes with it, and when you take somebody like Stephanie Mills that has so many or uh, she has so much information that she can help so many, you know, we would always like to know, like, what are the things that you have going on or things that you're doing to keep yourself, I would say, relevant and actively involved in this new world because it's totally different from your original world. I think what has kept me relevant really is, is, is AMP. Because I was always doing shows. Shout out to Aunt Paris. Yeah. When uh, I asked him or begged him. Now, I did beg him to, to be you my begged, magic. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You begged Aunt Paris, but you wouldn't get on one knee for Michael Jackson. Hold on. Let me, <laughs> let me, let me. I'm trying to, I got to put this together, right? I'm going to beg Aunt Harris, <laughs> but I will not get on one knee for the greatest performer of all time. Of all time. I'm I'm kind of lost for words with this one right well, here. Well, I want to... Is, who is this guy, M. Harris? I want him... <laughs> I need to meet this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Michael Jackson with the fro. You could have met... You, hey, you might be the reason he didn't keep the fro. <laughs> I'm blaming Stephanie Mills for Michael Jackson getting a perm or whatever he got. <laughs> and she settled for help. Hey, see, that's what be happening nowadays. I didn't make Michael but, but, Jackson get the perm. This but Shields and Tatum O'Neill and Lisa Marie Presley <laughs> made him get the perm. That's what be happening. I be seeing these dudes leaving these, I'm mean, see these girls leaving these st- Dies that can take them to another level for the plumber. Oh, no, but no, wait, 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 wait. I got to check you, my brother. <laughs> Listen. Uh-oh. Just she said, because, hey, that's, that's that Brooklyn coming out. She said, let me check you. <laughs> just because they're superstars don't mean they're nice men. Hold up, Just hold because up. they're rich Mike don't never mean raised his voice. Ne- just because they're, they're rich don't mean they're nice men. And sometimes a plumber will treat you like a queen when a man that has money, because he knows he has money and he has all this power, will treat you like dirt. So why they won't just go get the plumber? Hey, ladies, go they get y'all get, a plumber. They, no, they can get go the get... Get the plumber. They could get them a rich man and, and tame him. Get the plumber. Tame Never his Never be ass. stopped up. They could tame him. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Go with your plumber. Hey, hey, Farrah. That'll crazy. work. That won't work. That won't work. Go with your plumber, then. He took my amp hairs over my. Hey, amp. I got more respect for you now, dog. Amp Harris over Michael Jackson. Amp Harris over Michael Jackson. I, I didn't. Beg. I was. I'm not. Me and Amp are not involved in a relationship. 
Okay, okay, okay. Now we have some clarity. Now we so have some we clarity. are we are business partners. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Business over it's pleasure. Different. I be trying it's to different. tell them business, business oh, you over don't be pleasure. Trying to tell nobody and nothing. Speaking of business, <laughs> you have this clothing line that's coming out. <laughs> that's nice going segue, to. Nice segue, boy. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about business here now. We're going to get right to business. Because, you got to scratch your head on that yeah, one. Yeah, huh? because we don't went from Michael Jackson <laughs> to Plumber to Amp to I don't know. So we're going to get right okay, to the business so segment I'm of this. Start, I'm uh, Because I'm so petite, and there's a lot of petite women in this world, I want to start a clothing line for petite women. What's going to be the name of this clothing line? I haven't come up with it yet. What's going to I'm, I'm separate now, this clothing line from all the thousands of lines out there? The petite and the designed by me. Okay, it's gonna have step. Are you gonna put some of your famous slogans, or are you gonna put that no, touch on it? No, I'm going to. Uh, well, first of all, the first three dresses I'm gonna wear in my show, and I'm gonna take a. a don't say to Herbert. He's gonna buy all the inventory. If you don't stop talking about <laughs> Herbert. I'm going to sing to you tomorrow night. Same. I'm going to be right there. I'm going to sing. I'm, I'm going to bring you up on stage. I'm coming up there. And sit you right in the chair. Hey, you just going to make them women want me. And then I'm going to sit on your lap and sing to you. And I'm going to get all their social security. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see how you feel after that. I'm going to say, check, check, <laughs> check, check. Just hold on, grandson. We got you. Hold on. <laughs> And I'm getting ready to do a book. I haven't wanted to do a book. Amp the title of the book means a lot. What are we gonna do? In what are we gonna what name is the title this book? Of the book? We ain't got that yet. Okay, we gotta get the know, title of the book. But I don't know yet. I don't. So know. I wrote a book and I called it Gold Teeth the Gold Jacket. It told us it told a story. So what is gonna be the Stephanie Mills story? I might say something about the Yellow Brick Road or my my Yellow Brick Road journey or something like that. I okay, might say. So it's going to bring back the history of history of, of the, the Wiz, Wiz and 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 what went through and what we had because the doing the Wiz was not easy. You, you know, they didn't want you, us on Broadway. Do you remember your parts? Oh, absolutely. Do you remember those parts? When when was the last time you did a show with the Wiz? Was in the eighties. And oh, you remember those lines? It was. It was no. The last time was in the nineties. Early. And you 90s. remember those lines? Absolutely. Because you rehearsed them. And I did the the television version, but I played on M. Oh, you had to play a different. Oh role. yeah, I didn't want to play Dorothy. I'm too old to play Dorothy. But uh, in 2015, we did a live version on TV mm. for NBC That's of the Wiz. Interesting. And I played. On so M. you remember those lines and like. So, but, but because they're embedded in you, and then, and as a singer, okay, I don't know how many songs you have, song for song. How many songs do you have? Do you keep count of exactly how many songs you have? No, I've never counted. But if somebody start bringing up a song, you can remember it. Oh, I can remember it. Can yeah, remember I think I think I can. Like yeah. What What gives an artist the ability, especially an artist that's been in the industry for so long? To memorize those songs. No do drugs. Do it take you to a place? No drugs? No drugs. No drugs. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, like every song, do you, do you go to a place? It's like, okay, when you say, when you go, like you always say, when I think of home, do it take you to a true place? Oh, absolutely. So every time Every you time I those, sing that song. Well, see, I went back in, in the studio and I wanted to make it more urban because... Before that, before I went back in the studio and we recorded it, it was very pop. And I wanted to make it more R and B and urban for my audience. So the, I went I went the, back in and, and recorded it with, with Nick Mar Nick Martinelli was the producer. Do the powers that be do they discourage you from a business standpoint to say, Hey look, it it'd be better pop or do you go through and you fight and say, Look, no, I want this urban. Like, who has the I fight discretion? for it. I fight for what I, I wanted to do. I okay. fight for I wanted to record that song, and I used take six on the background and all of that. We fought for that. I fought for that. Like, I fought to do, I uh, feel the fire. You know, I, I That's fight for things. That's what you saw in the Herbert. <laughs> 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 Look, you red. You red, honey. I know I'm red. You don't want to stop. That means I am on fire. <laughs> 
So you see red as stop. I see red as fire. I it see all red comes as fire. back to mindset. See, I see fire. I see going up. I see and you rolling. And you talk about Herbert. And I know I bring up Herbert because I got to remember, like, I'm like, this guy, whoever Herbert is, man, hopefully you can come on the show and you can sit <laughs> right there. That's Herbert's seat right there. But, <laughs> hey, but this is Creative Life, and we are here with the great Stephanie Mills. And before we end this podcast or end this small journey, because I'm quite sure we're going to do more in the future because... We got a natural connection. We just be vibing. But for me and for all our viewers, we always like to ask, you know, what does it take to be great or what makes the great great? You know, throughout your tenure or throughout your journey, you've experienced so many things, but there's certain things that stand out that are consistent that you can say, man, if you do this or these are the things that these people did, what would those things be that you would kick down to somebody younger? I would say watch the greats, listen to the greats, and be gentle with yourself. Listen to uh, yourself. Uh, your first mind, I always say, is God talking to you. Don't listen to the noise. Just be gentle. Be gentle with yourself and never make a decision in desperation. So there you have it. You have the great... Stephanie Mills here on Creative Life Podcast. More than life, this is everything combined. We appreciate you coming and don't sing to nobody tomorrow. I'm, that, sing I'm singing to, to you tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm like my stage, son, you got to turn around like right No, here. I'm going to bring your ass out <laughs> on stage. No profanity. Oh, oh. You, oh, look what you, you said. Yeah. A really bad word. 